an OCI generative AI agent, a fully managed service that combines the power of a large language model with AI technologies to help you create intelligent virtual agents that can provide personalized, context-aware and highly engaging customer experiences. Recently, the service has introduced a new capability, which is the ability for an agent to call a custom API endpoint. What that means now is that you can configure an agent to speak securely to either OCI APIs or your own internal REST APIs. What I'm going to do in this demonstration is create a generative AI agent and we'll then create an API endpoint calling tool to demonstrate how this would look in reality. So first steps for us are to go to analytics and AI and then select generative AI agents. We'll then select the create agent button. Now the agent that we're going to create here, I'm going to get it to interact with an API that shortens URLs. Um, so what I'll do is I will give the agent the name URL Shortener. I'll give it exactly the same name for the description. Uh, everything else, we will keep that uh, blank. In terms of adding the tool, we'll actually create the agent first and then add the tool afterwards just to keep things a little bit simpler. The next screen where we will set up the agent endpoint, we will keep the default settings here, which disables human in the loop. We will also have all of the guardrails disabled. However, if you're looking to develop an agent in a production environment, obviously the recommendation would be to review the guardrails that are available and to ensure that they're configured appropriately for your environment. Once we've done that, we can then review the settings and then we'll select create agent. I'll just accept the Llama 3 license agreement and then the agent should go off into the process of being created. Now once the agent has been created, what we'll do is add a tool to the agent that uses the new API endpoint calling tool. Now what that tool will do is it will call out to a publicly accessible API that enables URLs to be shortened. So essentially it's just a public URL shortening service. And that will allow the agent to be passed requests to shorten URLs and then respond back with the shortened URL for that. Now that the agent has been successfully created, what we will do is go into the agent itself and then select tools. As you might remember from when we created the agent, we didn't create any tools as part of the agent creation. So what we'll do now is create a custom API endpoint calling tool that will call the URL shortening service. And the way that we do that is to select create tool, select custom tool, and then hidden away here, we have our API endpoint calling tool. We need to give this a name and a short description. So I'm going to give this exactly the same name as the agent, which is URL shortener, because that is what the tool will um, be used to do. And then a short description that just explains exactly what the tool actually does. Now, when we configure an API endpoint calling tool, there's some information that we need to provide, and that is the Open API schema definition in JSON format. Now, the specific tool that we're going to be using for API for URL shortening is called cleanuri.com. This provides a publicly accessible API endpoint that essentially you pass URL to and it will pass a shortened version of that URL back. Now, whilst this is a really cool, useful, free service, it doesn't include the JSON schema definition for it. However, what I have done to cheat, because I'm absolutely awful at writing schema definitions, is to use ChatGPT to create it for us. So essentially, what I have done is I've taken the description of the API, which as you can see, is fairly basic, popped it into ChatGPT and asked it based on the description of the API to create the schema for us. So what we'll do now, let me quickly copy this in. Obviously, again, my typical Brendan disclaimer applies. In the real world, you'd have somebody that knows what they're doing, creating this to make sure that the 
uh, LLM doesn't hallucinate and create some random definition that doesn't actually work. There we go. So now it's created our definition. We simply need to copy that. And then if we go back to the agent and then we uh, select inline and then we paste in the API schema. And as we can see, there's our schema that des describes exactly how the API works. We then need to select the authentication type. This is a publicly accessible free service that doesn't require authentication. So we'll select none. However, if the API that you would like to call requires any form of authentication, then there are various options available that can be used. For example, such as API key or even OCR resource principle, for example. But for this case, super simple, none, because it doesn't require any authentication at all, which makes this demonstration far simpler. The next thing that we need to do is a new option for an agent because we need to make external calls outside of the generative AI agent service. We need to hook up the agent to a virtual cloud network to provide it external access. In this specific case, the VCN will be used to hop across the internet to the cleanuri.com endpoint. But let's say, for example, the API that the agent was calling was an internal API. The connection to the virtual cloud network could potentially be used to traverse other services hosted within OCI or services hosted within an on-premises network. So what the next thing I need to do is choose the virtual cloud network. Now within my compartment, I already have a VCN configured, which is called demo VCN. So I will select that. I then need to select the subnet to put the generative AI agent into. I don't want this to be publicly accessible in any way. So I'm going to select private subnet. Now, if you don't have a VCN configured within the same compartment, then it's just a case of you making sure that a VCN has been created and I'll include instructions um, within the description along with this video on how to do that. Now, if we select create tool, what should happen is the tool should be created. We can now see that the URL shortener tool has been successfully created. So what we can do is if we go back to the agent, so the URL shortener agent, and we can launch the chat within the OCI console. This is a great, quick and easy way to test an agent. Again, in the real world, um, you'd have some form of nice front end that was accessible to end users to do this. For example, I typically use Streamlit for quick demos and proof of concepts of an agent. However, for basic testing from an administrator, the OCI console can be used to test a generative AI agent. So we'll make sure that the correct agent and endpoint has been selected. And what I'll then do is if you remember that the purpose of this tool is to shorten URLs, in plain English, I'm just gonna ask it to shorten a URL. What we'll now do is ask the agent to shorten a URL for us. So I'm gonna ask it, can you shorten the URL www.myamazingapp.ocidemo.co.uk? What should happen when we submit this request is that the agent would then route this to the appropriate tool. Again, in the real world, the generative AI agent would likely have multiple tools associated with it. So the first step would be for it to decide which tool to route the request to. It would then using the open API specification for the API, pass the request to cleanuri.com and then the resulting shortened URL would be then passed back to the end user. So if we just submit this now, what should happen in a few seconds is you come back with a shortened variant of the URL that we can use. And there we go. We can see it's taken our very long cumbersome URL and um, made this a little bit simpler. Again, in the business context, you'd likely use the API endpoint calling tool to interrogate internal business focused applications. You know, for example, could be used to query stock levels could be used to perform activities such as sending emails, for example, or chasing up customers. But this was just a nice, quick and easy way to demonstrate how you can hook up a generative AI agent to a public facing API and for the agent to perform an action based upon the capabilities of that API too. Hopefully you've found this useful uh, and seen actually it's not quite as complex as you may think to call custom APIs from a generative AI agent. Thank you so much for watching.